Okie dokie, so uh, fantastic. So welcome along everyone. Thank you all so much for coming to join us for Show to Assessor Connections today. Um, so just a few bits and pieces before we get started. Feel free to have your camera on and off on or off as we are running the session today. Um, if you can mute your mic while um, other people are presenting, that'd be fantastic. And we've had lots of you saying hi in the chat with your name and your centre already. So it's great to see you all coming along from so many different places today. Um, contribute in a way that works for you. So if that's uh, writing in the chat or uh, unmuting and asking a question, um, that is absolutely fine, whatever works best for you. Um, and if you have to dash away for any reason, that's totally cool. We know that life happens and you've all got lots of things going on. So we'll get going with our session today then. So the theme today is all about storytelling in STEM and uh, using stories uh, to convey STEM concepts within the uh, framework of the Young STEM Leader Programme. Um, so we've got lots of exciting speakers to come along today. So um, I will be telling you about some uh, of the STEM storytelling resources that we've been sent that we can share with you. Um, and then we're going to have presentations from uh, Iona Mohammed from uh, Deirdre's Primary School, Heather Bowie from the STEM Ambassador in Scotland team, and uh, Ewan Mitchell from the Early Years and Primary team at CERC. Uh, and we'll close with a bit of a QA and a group discussion as well. Um, so to start off today then, eh, I'm going to pass over to Iona Mohammed, who is a STEM teacher at Deadridge Primary School in Livingston. Um, so we've got a wee slide for her here. Um, so uh, you uh, use storytelling to show what uh, your primary sixes had learned when they started microbiology with a couple of different things here. She's going to tell us all about their stop motion film, Catch It In Your Elbow, the story of a sneeze. Uh, so very fitting with our storytelling and STEM theme. Um, and also their uh, Little Miss Good Bacteria story, which they wrote in the style of Mr. Men. So uh, without further ado, I will pass over to Iona, who is going to tell us a bit more about what they got up to. Hi, um, I'm Iona. I teach STEM at Deirdre's Primary. I did this a few years ago, so I can't really remember too much about it. I did it of the young STEM leader. I did it because I was, although I was teaching STEM, I had to take the primary six class on their probationary day out, so I, I needed to bundle. So I'd taught them microbiology, so they'd learned all about um, bacteria, viruses, vaccines, penicillin, all that kind of thing. Uh, and it was just a, really a way to try and get them to show their learning. And I'd done something with Nicola Connor, I think it was Science Through Stories, and I thought, well, let's write a story about it. And the one that came to me was to write it in the style for a children, for children, uh, write it in the style of like a list, uh, Mr. Men book. And when I couched it to the children, they'd never heard of Mr. Men. I couldn't believe it. Um, they didn't know a single Mr. Man. They'd never heard a story. I was gobsmacked. So we went straight on the internet and started watching. But the main ones, things like Mr. Tickle, Mr. Bump and Mr. Happy. And we started to discuss, the, you know, that, that every book was the same kind of format all the time. And so we looked at the structure of the books. We decided we were going to write a story about Little Miss Good Bacteria. And she was going to be the main character and she was going to have a, an evil twin sister called Little Miss Bag Bacteria. And it was all to do with them showcasing what they knew. They had to get every single fact they could about bacteria and viruses and penicillin and all that kind of thing into this story. So we wrote it as a class and I had them for a day and a half a week. So we did it over maybe about three or four weeks and the children got really into it. And because we did it as a class, there was no pressure on them as individuals to, to write. Um, so we did the bare, the, the kind of structure of it first, and then we padded it out. And as we wrote a bit, we would then edit it so that each bit was perfect, basically. So the structure was that Little Miss Good Bacteria, you know, it was opened with how her, you know, what kind of house she lived in. She was very neat and tidy. And then one day she sees her evil twin sister outside Little Miss Bad Bacteria and she chases her to the park. And in the park, they wrote in Mr. Tickle was there. And he was tickling all the children and of course she's got lots of hands so there was lots of bacteria around and then mr bump was there and he slid off a slide and got a, a, a big cut and obviously a lot of miss bad bacteria jumped into this cut and they tried to clean it up and it was going to be okay but he had a wee look at it and he got all grubby and he eventually got ill uh, because he'd got so much bacteria into it and 
then he had to get penicillin because he was ill. So they managed to get all these kind of facts into this story. The kids, the kids got so into it, they really loved it. Um, and then we decided that after that, they would make a stop motion film. So we parceled it up. Every bit, every child got a certain bit and they wrote the script and they made all the characters. It was about a paper. So we made a stop motion film about that and they loved it so much that they decided they would do a different one and we did um, the story of a sneeze catch it in your elbow and instead of making a paper one we did as you can see on the thing we made um plasticine models and we made a stop motion film about that but this time instead of writing a big story they made a cartoon so then um, they each made a cartoon version of the story and then we took the best bits and made the class story and that's that's basically what it was. That was the whole thing was just to bundle lots and lots of outcomes so that I could kind of, you know, do a big project, but get lots of different bits of learning into it. That's it, basically. Brilliant. Thank you so, so much for sharing. Um, I know that you have to head off before the end, so I just wanted to check if anyone had any questions uh, for Iona just now. Um, before she heads off. Uh, you can always pop them in the chat or you can unmute. Emily says it sounds brilliant. Yeah, it does sound fantastic and it sounds like a great way um, for your uh, learners to be able to show what they've learned by being able to tell the story. Fantastic. Okay, I don't see any questions at the moment. Um, so if you do have any, pop them in the chat. Um, yeah, the colourful models uh, are absolutely fantastic. Uh, the plasticine and stop motion is a fantastic idea of a way to tell the story. And I can't believe that none of them knew who any Mr. Men or Little Misses were. That is absolutely crazy. Terrible, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, you've got them got them all uh, sorted on it now. <laughs> fantastic. Okie dokie. Thank you so much, Iona. Um, no worries. Sorry it was so short, but that was, that was basically it in a nutshell. It's a really nice um, kind of simple idea of a way to um, tell, you know, quite a, con co a complicated STEM concept. So, no, absolutely, it's uh, it's really nice and clear exactly what uh, what you all got up to. OK, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. OK, bye. Cheers, thank you. Okie dokie, so hopefully I've moved that slide on okay there. So there was a couple of other um, tutor assessors who had some STEM storytelling examples that they wanted to share with us, but they are not able to be with us today. So I'm going to do my best to uh, give their um, storytelling justice by relaying on what they got up to. Um, so the first tutor assessor that has given me their example is uh, Nicola Harvey from St Mark's Primary in Rain for sure. Um, so she did with her uh, young STEM leaders um, some STEM story time. So they started out, they did some research online uh, and they chose some STEM books that they wanted to buy because they had noticed when doing an audit of their uh, school library that they didn't have many STEM books available to them. So they uh, did a bit of research online, they chose what STEM books they wanted to buy for their school. And while they were doing that, they focused on diversity in STEM and stereotypes as they had been doing that as part of their uh, Young STEM Leader programme. So while they were making their choices of what to buy, uh, they were looking at what books had diverse characters um, and not simply to quote what Nicola said to me, an old white man with a white coat uh, and a beard. Um, so they were looking for more diverse STEM stories than that. Uh, and then during British Science Week, once they had chosen their books, uh, their young STEM leaders shared these books with younger children in the school uh, over a few afternoons. And they uh, asked the younger children to spot connections to STEM in the stories. So went through them and found all the different ways that uh, STEM was involved in the stories and STEM was involved in the wider world. So uh, a really nice example of how storytelling was fitting in with uh, not only Young STEM Leader Week, but also uh, British Science Week as well. Um, 
And then next up, we also had a uh, tutor assessor, Rachel McDermott from uh, Kirk and Tillish High School. So uh, not only uh, early years and primary examples of using uh, storytelling, but also in a, a high school uh, secondary setting as well. Um, so they did a, a project on um, LGBT History Month on um, STEM figures within uh, the LGBT community and this was actually during lockdown um, so initially they shared information on an LGBT figure in STEM for each uh, month of Pride um, so here we go this was how they started out so uh, due to lockdown uh, they had to run virtual events and they did that throughout LGBT History Month um, and they made some tweets they, uh, which eventually became posters as well. They researched lots of different figures. Um, so this is an example of uh, some of the tweets that they posted each week in February during LGBT History Month. So they researched lots of different um, figures in STEM and uh, initially put out some tweets about them. And uh, this then grew into a wider project. And in the next year, when they were uh, doing this with the next uh, cohort of young STEM leaders, they uh, did work, uh, developed that work further from tweets and expanded them into uh, posters, which were then displayed around the school. So getting the rest of the school on board um, and learning about all the LGBT um, figures in STEM. Um, so a really nice example there. And uh, it was uh, great that Rachel was able to uh, share those slides with us. So thank you so much to her for that. Um, Okie dokie. So now then I'm going to pass over to Heather Bowie, who is the Senior Programme Coordinator with the STEM Ambassadors in Scotland team. Um, and she's going to be telling us a bit about uh, STEM Ambassadors in general and uh, STEM Ambassadors in Scotland Week specifically, which will give you a bit of a better idea of why we have picked storytelling in STEM at this particular moment. Uh, so she's got her own slides to share, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen and pass over to Heather. Thank you, Laura, and thank you for everybody coming along. I think I see some familiar faces um, there, so it's nice to see you again. Um, yeah, so I work for the STEM Ambassador in Scotland Hub, and our STEM Ambassador in Scotland Week is coming up at the end of this month. So just before I tell you more about the week, I'm pretty certain that a lot of you have heard of STEM Ambassadors and worked with the STEM Ambassador team, but can I have just a quick thumbs up or a yes in the chat? Um, yeah, or on screen is brilliant. Just so I'm aware of sort of if people do know about them, don't know about them. Um, I think there's maybe a couple of people haven't heard of us, so I am going to give a very brief overview of what the STEM Ambassador in Scotland team do, what STEM Ambassadors do, and then I'll tell you more about STEM Ambassador in Scotland Week. So STEM Ambassadors are volunteers from across all sort of STEM sectors um, who work with educational practitioners and community settings to bring their real life experiences into the classroom or into events that are organised. So we have employers from across Scotland and um, we run the Scottish hub here at CERC but the programme runs right across the UK and is run by STEM Learning. Companies get their staff to volunteer to become ambassadors we put them through some induction training um, about interacting with young people. We make sure they're all PVG checked and then they're available for you as educators to basically tap into their experience and their knowledge. The way we do that is through our website stem.org.uk. So if you're not already, you can register on there as an educator. And then it's like a big massive notice board. You can go on and you can request an ambassador to come along to your setting or to do an online event for you. And likewise, you can go and have a look at what our ambassadors have got to offer. So they put up offers on the website of what they're able to do. So it might be a talk, it might be a hands on session, but you can go on there and have a look. So that's an ambassador's and see they come from all sorts of sectors, lots of engineers, lots of lab scientists, but all sorts of things that you might not think of. We've got um, marine mammal consultants um, accountants. We're getting more and more people in the math side of things, which is quite nice. Um, and they can be students. We have a lot of PhD students. They can be 
well into their career or just starting, or it may be somebody who's retired and just has a passion and an interest in STEM. But there's four and a half thousand of them in Scotland available for you, so please do make use of them. So just a quick example here of some of the things that you might want to get involved with them for. Um, obviously coming into classrooms, doing a hands-on activity is great. They do a lot of careers events, secondary schools, will often have their um, speed networking events or careers fairs where ambassadors will come along and talk about the subjects that they took and the route they took into their career. But they can get involved in longer term things, mentoring, um, they get involved in judging competitions. So there's all sorts of things you can tap into the ambassadors for. So the reason that we're sort of really here tonight is to talk about STEM Ambassador in Scotland Week, which, as I said, runs from the end of January um, into the first week in February. So we brought the same Ambassador in Scotland Week about at the start of the pandemic as a way for our ambassadors to reach educators online. That was how it sort of first came about to make sure our ambassadors were still able to interact and it went down so well and um, we've decided to keep doing it. So it's really our celebration of our ambassadors um, and helping share what they do um, and highlighting all areas of STEM through this week of celebration that we run. This year we've gone with the theme of storytelling, hence um, the session tonight um, and everything else linked to it. We've been doing a lot of work with people like the Book Trust and with libraries and Fife and Renfrewshire and things um, and we were already aware of sort of the holistic curriculum in Scotland but we've been doing more and more work to make sure our ambassadors are aware of how they can link these things. So linking um, literacy and STEM subjects and we're doing training with our ambassadors on those sort of things. So we're trying to get our ambassadors thinking about that. So we thought that this would be a nice opportunity to do that. So we've got a whole calendar of events for the run up to the week, during the week and for after the week. And hopefully it's things that uh, the young STEM leaders can also get involved in. I'll share a number of links. I'll pop them in the chat, but I'll also send them to Laura to send out after this so you can see all this information. So during the week itself, we've running a series of storytelling sessions for primary age children. And I think it's worthwhile going into these a little bit more um, just to let you know what sort of things happening with them. So we've done storytelling sessions before and got really good audiences for primary age children but they have in the past been an ambassador would read a story and then talk a little bit about their job and how it links to the story which has been great but we also realise that certainly in primary it's far more beneficial and beneficial to people like young STEM leaders to have some kind of hands-on activity that then links into that so they can take that away and use it um, with the younger learners. So we've tried to do that with these sessions. We've tried to keep them a little bit shorter. They're half hour sessions, so they should be quite easy to tap into. It's not running across breaks and things, hopefully. But they all, there's different age ranges they're aimed at, but they all have some sort of takeaway, some sort of either an interactive element while you're doing it or an idea of an activity that you can take away with you. So we've got things like, um, how do you build some amazing structures that's aimed at age 8 to 12 years? There is, I mean, you know your classes um, and your pupils, so these are not hard and fast age ranges. You know, you can decide what you think is fitting for you. But that's one of our ambassadors who works in construction and town planning, and she looks at sort of just building simple structures with paper to highlight the difference that these things make, the sort of choices that they make in construction and why they make the choices. We've got things like Let the Wind Blow, which is all about renewable energy. And again, there will be an activity to take away from that. So you can find all of these on our um, events page and I'll just pop that in there. And as I say, they're running throughout the week. If you register for them and you're not able to attend at the time, please still register. If you have a look and find that the times don't suit you, please do register because you will then have access to the recording after the event. So because it's book readings, um, there is limitations to us being allowed to put them on our website. But if you've registered, you have that link and you can access it after the event. So we've also got another session running by Tech She Can. So Tech She Can is 
a great program which um, has whole sort of resources all about it was initially sort of designed at looking at getting more women into tech but they have expanded they cover um, everything so they've got loads and loads of resources and they're running a session for eight to twelve year olds all about ethical hacking um, and again that's on the events page you can sign up for that we have got a competition running, it's a STEM story competition. So we've been working with SALSA, the, I have to always check, the Scottish Universities Life Sciences Alliance, <laughs> who've made a brilliant resource, a uh, colouring in book, and you can access that, it's downloadable. Um, in fact, I'll give you a link to that just now. And we're asking pupils to have a look, pick one of the, pages from the book that they're interested in. There's, it covers all sorts of different STEM careers. Colour it in if they wish to do or the younger pupils might want to do that, but do a little bit of research on that career and then put something in writing um, about what they found out from the research. So oh, Ewan's got a physical copy there. Um, I'm sure he'll tell you more about them as well. Um, put something in writing in whatever format they want, so in a poem, in a report about what they found out about that career and then submit it to us and um, we'll be dishing out some prizes for that. Oh, so there's more about that there. Um, as I see, we're encouraging them to just find out more about the careers because obviously it's a colouring book, it is aimed at early level, but the careers that are covered in it, there's a lot of work that can be done um, to find out more about them. And we thought it was quite a nice thing for young STEM leaders then to use with younger students to take that in and discuss these careers more. For secondary aged pupils, we've stretched the storytelling theme slightly. <laughs> so we're asking ambassadors to tell their story, to tell their career story. Um, so again, we've had a look at what we've done in the past. We used to try and put on sessions in high schools or online during high school classes. And because of the different periods and things, it was never really great for people to come along to these live. So what we've done is go out to schools with biographies of some of our STEM ambassadors and ask for their questions, which we've now recorded and they'll be released throughout the week. They'll be on our YouTube channel and on our website. And we've got a whole range of ambassadors, so engineers, biomedical scientists, and um, we've got a butterfly um, consultant, a marine consultant, and they will be recording a little bit about what they studied, um, how they got into the role that they're in and answering questions that have been submitted from young people. So again, they're quite nice short sessions, just 20 to 25 minutes, and they'll be available on our website during and after the week. So um, really easy to pick up for younger pupils as well. I don't think there's anything in them. And obviously you can view them yourself beforehand and um, see what you think, but I think they would be really relatable for young STEM leaders. So that'll all be on our website and um, YouTube channel. We've also got a whole host of resources available to you. I'm just having a look at our practitioner book just now. So I'm sure Ewan will tell you a bit about STEM by the book um, that CERC earlier in primary have, have produced, but we've bundled all these resources together in our practitioner handbook. So I'll give you a link to that just now. Um, different storytelling resources. So STEM Learning also have a host of storytelling resources there and you'll find all that in the practitioner handbook. And in that handbook, there's also um, a whole host of ideas for young STEM leaders to actually take ideas from. We've hopefully linked to all the criteria of the Young STEM Leader Programme, where we think they could fit this in, where they, we think STEM Ambassador in Scotland we could fit into that. So have a look at that. Uh, as I say, that's a link to the practitioner handbook there. And we'll be going out across social media. Um, we'll have things every day. Um, we'll be looking out for posts. There'll be a raffle. Um, if we see any great posts coming from you, please tag us at Scott STEM Amp and use a hashtag SAIS Week 23 um, to let us know what you're doing, how you're linking to storytelling, and there'll be prizes given out for that. So, that is all I have to say on that. I did cheekily ask if I could sneak one extra thing in. So 
STEM ambassador in Scotland week, please um, get involved. Let us know what you're up to. We have another exciting project coming up um, called our Upskill and Engage programme. And the idea of this is that we are looking for 50 schools to join us on the programme. We'll be getting 50 ambassadors trained up and we're looking at training our ambassadors so they are skilled and confident in delivering to early and first level students. So we know that our ambassadors are really great at going into high schools and maybe older primary pupils and talking about their careers. But we do know from feedback that sometimes they struggle with where to pitch it when they're dealing with younger pupils. So we're hosting um, a range of training sessions with them, with our ambassadors, with um, Dr Richard Holmes, who is a lecturer in education and with a science communicator to give them the skills to interact with a younger audience and the training. So the idea is we'll train these ambassadors up and then we will pair them up with schools so they'll come in and do three sessions in the same school where they will look at sort of general science skills so things like science inquiry and um, science questioning skills and link them to their careers. So from the school's point of view, all we really need from you is to sign up. There is a session that we ask educators to come to to find out a bit more about how they can work with ambassadors and what they can gain from ambassadors. And then you get an ambassador to come out and run these engagements within your school. There's an information session on Wednesday, the 25th of January to find out a bit more about the programme and I'll share a link with you in a moment. There's a form to fill in if you would like to be involved with the programme. I'll get that for you in a second. But that is everything from me just now. So if you've got any questions, please feel free to ask in the chat or unmute yourself, that'd be great. Fab, thank you so much, Heather. Um, so much to fit into the uh, storytelling theme. Um, we've got some lovely applause there as well. So uh, yeah, loads of great resources for people to get involved in there and uh, lots of exciting things coming up. Um, does anyone have any questions either unmuting or in the chat at the moment? Don't see any in the chat. Yeah, I popped a couple of links in there for you, Heather. So there's a link in for that Upskill and Engage Primary programme and a link to the general page you've got there for STEM Ambassador in Scotland that will be 2023 as well. Um, no worries. Fantastic. Okie dokie. If we've not got any questions in the chat yet, then um, I will uh, share, go back to sharing my slides. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, and we're going to go back to where we were. Brilliant. Okie dokie. So next we're going to uh, hand over to Ewan Mitchell, who is Head of Early Years and Primary here at CERC. Um, and he's going to tell us all about the STEM by the Book resources. Uh, and he also is already getting busy putting all the links in the chat there. Um, so I will hand over to Ewan. I put the links in the chat by mistake. I pressed return when I was still typing things. So anyway, uh, but yes, yeah, so thanks Heather for for the for priming me up for the for sharing the stem by the book resource on the website. Um, uh, if you've not already done so, then please do have a look. It's freely available on our website. We started to look at developing this resource at the start of um, 2020. No idea what happened around then, but you know, people were working a lot from home and children weren't going to school. So it was to try and try and encourage a bit more practical, hands on um, experiential learning um, and to provide some some, I suppose, additional activities to the core maths and literacy that um, that, the, that the schools were all having to focus, focus on through your recovery planning and recovery curriculum. So on our website, um, on the slides that are on the, the that are on the on the PowerPoint that I'm sure you get shared, it's uh there's um it's hyperlinked to our website. There are 15 book 15 books um on there just now, um covering early, first, and second, and various different aspects and topics within um STEM, very much science related, but there are hi um, hyperlinks to our um, early years and primary uh, YouTube channel, as well as any associated bulletins that we have that will take you through where the where the E's and O's can fit in. And basically it's trying to use 
trying to use literacy, which is for something that we all focus on in, in early years in primary and through education in general, but how to how to engage those even more now non-engaged learners when since they've returned back from um from from lockdown. Um I know myself uh, as when I was when I was in schools not so long ago that um that you know there was already um boys and girls in the class who were not particularly either engaged with either maths or literacy and to use a literacy context to get them to either engage with maths science and other literacy contexts maybe increasing their specialist vocabulary in stem then this is a fantastic way to do it i'm not saying that our our um pdfs which are downloadable or you can use them on your smart board so they're interactive are are the only resource to to go to which is why i've shared in the chat there um, the stem by the book resources through um for stem stem through stories from um from uh, Falkirk and from Rays, and also this the this the stem stories linked to the big bug bags which Glasgow started to put, started to pull together a good number of years ago. Um, so there's a plethora of resources out there. Hopefully, the things that I've shared in the chat there you can utilise and you can use. And um, feel free to to engage with with our resources on on our website as well. And I have used this with my son. We've got 200 copies here at CERC. So if anybody is wanting us to send anything out, it does cover a number of different jobs and roles. And actually, it gets a lot of questions going as well. It's really good to see the diverse, the, di the diversity in the book of, of people that you wouldn't anticipate potentially holding certain jobs actually being portrayed in the images as well. So the images are really nice, simple and clear. Um, and they can be used, I think, throughout the school, not just not just down in the early years. And that's pretty much all from me. Fantastic, thank you, Ewan. Um, and I realise I've got two slides for you here, so they've got loads of different books. So that's the uh, first date there, but there's a uh, there's loads there that you can have a look at. So um, fantastic. Jamie's got a question. You've got your hand up there. Hi there. Uh, I just wanted to ask. Can people borrow those um, salsa books from primary team Ewan? They can they can have them for nothing, Jamie. If they want to get in touch with me, then I'll fire them out to them for you. There you go. So I've got 200 copies sitting here, and apparently I can get my hands on more if I need to. The only thing I think that's the only thing that's linked to these books is that if you are going to if you're requesting some from me, then I've got a, a little evaluation that that, can, that needs that needs to be done from from uh, Salsa, just to see what the impact and the uh, and what the learners thought of them. That's all. Great, thank you. Okay. Fantastic. Yes, and Jamie, I think you put a link in the chat to a resource that we made through Young STEM Leader Week that link with us those Salsa books as well. So um, there's uh, loads of resources that go along with those too. Brilliant, thank you, Ewan. Um, so on the topic of uh, you highlighting some more storytelling resources, I've just got a few that we had come across when we were researching for this session. Um, so the first one is Dynamic Earth have some uh, a really extensive uh, professional learning on the theme of storytelling that they're running over the next few months. Uh, the first couple there have already run but they've still got quite a few and um, you can sign up for as many of them as you like uh, you just register for them individually on the website and I will put a link to that in the chat in just a second and um, so just to highlight some of the ones uh, that they've got coming up uh, so the next one is running this Wednesday uh, so you've still got time to sign up for that and they've partnered with quite a lot of really cool organizations to run these uh, so this one is running in conjunction with the botanics with the theme of rumble in the jungle so uh, using uh, storytelling uh, within that theme um, they're uh, going to be exploring some uh, concepts around uh, plant science and uh, things to do with the botanics um, and uh, lots of hints and tips on how to use storytelling from uh, the expertise at Dynamic Earth as well. Uh, so that is coming up pretty soon, uh, but uh, a little bit further away, they've got a couple more. Um, so 23rd of February, they are doing a Puffin 
power, exploring the climate emergency. Uh, they use a really nice story to show uh, how climate change can be impacting species right here in Scotland. Um, and uh, they've got lots of uh, lovely kind of puppets and videos uh, or, and things like that. Uh, I've uh, seen that one in action and it's really, really great and it's uh, really great at showing the impact in quite a simple way. And then in March, they are looking more broadly at outdoor stories and how you can use storytelling in outdoor learning uh, within your own context and setting, be that in the playground, park or any other wild Scottish space that you uh, are using uh, storytelling when you're working with your young people. Uh, so that's Dynamic Earth. And then um, Ewan hinted at this one slightly. Um, so STEM uh, Glasgow have uh, some um, storytelling resources called STEM A Story. And as you said, they go along with some of the book bug resources. Um, the 2022 ones um, go along with uh, the books on the right hand side there. Um, so out of nowhere is a beetle looking for his missing friend. Um, and there's some activities around planning a picnic activity, sorting between living and non-living things um, and making sounds and making beetle sounds. Uh, the perfect fit is a triangle in a world of circles. So there's creating a bowling game, uh, building shapes and uh, nets and tangram puzzles. The Story Thief um, is all about kind of the wonder of reading and uh, there's um, an activity on facts about octopuses and learning about different environments. And then Jeremy worried about the wind there. They've got a paper windmill activity um, and thinking about how nature harnesses the wind um, for uh, things like seed dispersal and then doing experiments around that using fans and paper confetti of different shapes and that sort of thing. Um, so loads of activities there. And uh, that's just a quick uh, download if you hit download on those. So I'll just pop those links in the chat now. So. This one here is the link to the Dynamic Earth CLPL. And then this one here is the link to uh, the STEM A Story. Um, this is just a generic link to the um, STEM Glasgow resources page. So you just have to scroll down a bit till you get to um, STEM A Story 2022. Um, but I think they have STEM A Stories from other years up there still as well. So there's plenty of different books uh, that you can look through to get some resources to go along with them. Um, Excellent. Okie dokie. So uh, that was all the resources that we had picked out to share with you. Um, I would definitely encourage you to sign up for the Dynamic Air sessions. Um, uh, and if you can't manage those, then some of those other sessions as well. Um, so it was uh, just to kind of wrap up now, I think I know that you had uh, an opportunity to ask questions after each speaker was finished, but um, we'll just wrap up with a bit of a Q&A opportunity now. So um, does anyone have any questions? I don't think Iona has managed to stick around until the end there, but any questions for Heather about STEM Ambassador in Scotland Week and how Young STEM Leader could fit into that or any other questions or anything for you and about uh, the STEM by the book resources? Um, Nope. So you can pop any questions in the chat there or free, feel free to unmute. I can ask a question then. Ewan, have you got plans to expand to any more stories for STEM by the book? Yeah, so we're about to publish one towards the end of this month, actually, and the same for February and March. Um, but if anybody specifically wants a book, um, to be linked with them as any STEM based activity, then drop me an email and we can work on that um, work on that for you, because obviously I've not been in schools for coming up four years now, so I know that books, books and common themes do change. But um, if there is anything that you would like, um, like linked, then I would be happy to to work on that along with the team. So we're, go we're going to be launching one in a, in a couple of weeks time. So watch out on Twitter and Facebook for the links there um, and uh, as well. Fantastic. Yeah, so definitely watch out for those. And yeah. uh, that sounds like a great offer. If there's any book that your class are particularly keen on, um, I'm sure you can help you out in uh, getting some uh, activities and storytelling linked together with STEM from that. Fantastic. Does anyone else have any other questions for our speakers? 
No, not at the moment. Okie dokie. Oh, I think I've put all the links in the chat there, so we will move on now then. Um, so there is a link to a jam board here. Um, so we're going to move on to a little bit of a group activity. So you can either click on the link on the slide there or you can pop that link into your browser um, and that should take you to a jam board. Um, so I've split it into primary, secondary, early years and community. And if you uh, want to share any examples of storytelling that you've used in STEM in your setting already or any plans that you've got for using storytelling for example, during upcoming STEM Ambassador in Scotland week or any other upcoming storytelling and STEM things that you have. So it'd be really great to share some more ideas of how storytelling can be used in STEM. So I can see someone has managed to add a sticky note there. So you just go to that left hand side there, add your sticky note and you can pop it in the relevant section for your setting if you're in primary, secondary or otherwise and uh, yeah, pop in what your ideas are and hopefully we can uh, start sharing some best practice and different ways that we can hopefully use storytelling, uh, especially for uh, Heather's upcoming um, STEM Ambassador in Scotland week. So we've got lots of sticky notes coming up here. Have we got any uh, thing that we can fill in on any of them? Here we go, we've got some folk working on some sticky notes here. Excellent, we've got first one there. So um, we use talk through stories in our school. Um, I am currently trying to make some staying activities to go with each book. Fantastic, that sounds great. And that's in the primary section as well. So um, I'm sure you and with Stand by the Book would be able to uh, give you a bit of advice on those. Uh, that's definitely his area of expertise. Um, we've got STEM a story planning cards have been well received. Um, I have used the raised science through stories planners, which are excellent too. Um, is that the resource you and that you referenced um, before? I think there's a link to that in the chat. Is that right? I don't see you in any voice. Maybe it disappears. Uh, we have here built a flying machine to go with a uh, Rosie Revere engineer. Oh, I don't know that one, but that sounds very exciting to build a flying machine. Um, we used the book How Do Apples Grow by Jill McDonald and wrote the story of the apple as well as harvesting and cooking with them too. That sounds like loads of different subjects going on there. So that sounds absolutely fantastic. Um, always try to add STEM activities to book bugs. Excellent. Yeah, that's exactly what they do with the um, resources that uh, STEM Glasgow have put together. Um, so if you're looking for some ideas to go along with those books, that is definitely a place you can go for that. Um, excellent. So we've got loads of lovely primary examples there. I don't know if we've got any examples from any other um, any other settings. Does anyone that put one of those sticky notes up on the board want to unmute and tell us any more about uh, what you've been up to, what went well, um, what you would change for next time, anything like that? Any advice you have for anyone else that were doing a similar thing? Um, oh, more coming up here. Oh, here we go, Heather. Uh, one of your talks is linked to Rosie Revere. I love the book. Excellent. That sounds uh, great. And you can check that out at that link there. That's brilliant. Thank you, Heather. Um, we've got, uh, we combined the YESC Little Lighthouse Kits with the Lighthouse Keeper's Lunch Book. Excellent. That sounds uh, very exciting. And I think I missed another one here. Uh, we'll have a STEM week where we ask speakers to come in. We'll have class activities based on stories for during the week too. Brilliant. If you are still looking for speakers for that, I know that uh, STEM ambassadors in Scotland, that's exactly the sort of thing that they would be able to help you out with. Um, you can put a request on um, their website there and they'll be able to connect you up with speakers working in STEM. So um, if you've not done that already, that is definitely the next place to go. Um, the Scottish Book Trust worked with Raise to produce resources linked to Read Write Count book released in November 2022. That sounds really useful. Um, if that is not a link in the chat already, if you've got a link to that to share with everyone, that would be fantastic. Um, 
Brilliant. Is that another link going in the chat there as well? Oh, is that just a STEM ambassador? It's fantastic. Um, a nice activity we've used is to take pictures from a story we read. For example, Jay and we worried about the wind, which we referenced uh, with STEM Glasgow, and then used markup on the iPads to add to the story ourselves. That sounds like a brilliant idea. Um, we've got a hand up there. Um, I'm sorry, I can't see your name because your box is so small, but if you want to unmute, please uh, feel free to um, tell us about your STEM example. Hi, Laura, it's Caroline. I'm one of the science development officers through um, RAISE and the Scottish Book Trust ones. I don't know what I've done when I came into this chat, but I'm not able to access the chat because I think I'm in through my own team rather than the CERC one. But the those resources are just on the Scottish Book Trust website for the um, Read, Write, Count book segment in November. Fantastic. Thank okay. you. So if you go to the Scottish Book Trust website, it sounds like you can find those. So they go along with Read, Write, Count. Um, and that looks like it was just recently released. So that's fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, yeah, the chat is a bit funny because we're using Teams Live, so it can sometimes be in the activity section rather than in your chat section. Um, I don't know if that helps at all. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just slightly different because we're using uh, live events. Great, I think I went through all of the activities that we've got put up there at the moment. Um, does anyone have anything else that they would like to share? Oh, we've still got some coming in and getting moved about here. Uh, excellent, that's, uh, that's a link to that Scottish Book Trust. Thank you, Ewan, for finding that, that's perfect. Brilliant. Okie dokie. Well, if we've not got anything else on there and uh, we've not got anything else to share here, I will uh, wrap up the event just uh, slightly early. Um, so our next Tutor Assessor Connections event, I will plug before we finish though, the next one is going to be on our Institute of Physics grants. Um, so if you're not aware of these already, I would definitely go and look it up. So there are uh, £100 grants that you can uh, apply for, for any physics related activity that you're doing with your young STEM leaders, they can be used to bot buy kit and resources to run physics themed activities um, and if you're looking for some inspiration on the sort of activity that you could run uh, using those grants uh, come along on Monday 6th of February and uh, we're going to be hearing from um, some oh there we go there's a link in the chat there to the uh, Institute of Physics Awards um, so definitely go and check that out um, it's a really great way to get some money for some kit and some resources um, and as I say if you're looking for or some inspiration on uh, what you could uh, do with that money, uh, come along then and you will be able to uh, hear from some of the children assessors who have already uh, won one of those grants uh, and hear about what they have been doing with that money and uh, what impact that has made on uh, their young people. Um, so I will Primary schools can also apply. Yep, so it's now, it started out that it was just the higher ends of the uh, Young STEM Leader Programme, the higher levels, but now any level can apply for that grant. So um, from uh, primary levels all the way up to the end of secondary school, any physics themed um, Young STEM Leader activities that you're running can be funded by that grant. Excellent. Well, uh, I will wrap up there. Thank you all so much for coming along to the session today. And uh, thank you all so much to our speakers, to um, Iona Mohammed, who uh, was telling us about her microbiology projects, to Heather, who uh, was telling us all about STEM Ambassador in Scotland Week and uh, all the different ways that you can get involved with that. So please do scroll up through that chat, have a look at some of those links and the ways that you can get involved with the STEM Ambassador in Scotland team. And uh, thank you to Ewan as well for telling us about those STEM by the book resources and uh, do go and check out those links as well. Um, so thank you all so much for coming and have a lovely evening.
Thanks, guys. See you later. Bye. Thank you, and thank you, everyone. Bye. Thanks. See you later. Bye.